Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 5 of the Tracksuit to the Top Series here with Lewis FC in the Ryman Premier League. Hopefully you guys are good. Today I have you guys as promised the Met Police game. This pretty much marks the halfway point in the season uh, of the 24 teams. This is our 24th game. It's a chance for us to reflect on, I guess, the first half of the season. Look forward to perhaps plan to January and beyond that. And um, yeah, so I guess before we do that, it's probably worth just having a quick look back at the game since the previous episode. If you missed it, go back and watch it as always. It was a game against Plymouth in the FA Cup. As you can see, since that game, I've played six league games. one four, lost two, three wins in a row that were all 5-1. Slightly bizarre, I know. Granted, they were against lower down teams. I believe Peace, Haven and a BCD, a bottom and second from bottom in the leagues. But nevertheless, good results. Anyway, the first result after the game against Plymouth was unfortunately a defeat against Barry Town, which was pretty disappointing. At home, you know, I'd, I'd back us to do well this game, and we simply didn't. Uh, Gary Bowes, for them, um, was the guy who kind of put us to the sword, and he's a very good player in this division. You can tell that just by looking at his attributes there. Uh, it's worth noting, actually, I have done a little bit of fiddling um, with my attributes. Someone mentioned this in the very first episode in the comments, and I forgot about it, but I've actually changed the threshold for the different colours of attributes or attributes I know people get annoyed by how I say it uh, but you can see here it's slightly different so hopefully at a glance when you're watching these episodes you can more easily see uh, kind of the players uh, key attributes and if you want to do this this yourself all you do is you go to your preferences interface skin colors and then you can change the color of the uh, numbers here and then you can change the threshold here so as you can see I've got average as five good as eight and excellent as 11 so a little tip for you there if you're perhaps managing in the lower leagues and um, you you want to kind of more easily be able to highlight players' key strengths. Anyway, the next game was a good win. This time, uh, Nevin getting us two goals, which was very, very nice. This was a little bit of a nervy game. We actually went 3-0 up in this uh, before being pegged back to 3-2. And with five minutes left on the clock, I was a little bit worried. However, uh, Nevin's goals were enough to secure us the win. And this guy, the 18-year-old, has been absolutely superb for us this year. You can see he joined us on a free, a 7.52 average rating, 7 assists and 11 goals and him alongside Jack Randall have really been the big players for us in this run of fixtures unfortunately we did fail to score against Dulwich Hamlet despite probably having uh, an even share of the game with them Gary Efflick our um, captain was a little bit of a miss going off at half time that was unfortunate overall in all though it just was a little bit disappointing we lost 1-0 in the end could have perhaps been better on a different day. However, it was a game of few chances and a very lacklustre finishing by both teams. Anyway, as I mentioned right at the start of this run of fixtures, we actually won three games on the bounce 5 1. Don't think I've ever had that happen in an FM before, at least not off the top of my head. As you can see here, Neven getting man of the match again. Jack Randall also getting on the score sheet. He got on uh, in the 13th minute, and this actually ended a goal scoring drought for this guy. And to be honest, he's a player who he's not hit the ground running, but certainly in these last few 5 1 wins, he's got his confidence back. You know, he's got a few goals to his name, and hopefully, he can take this momentum against the lesser teams and transfer it into the bigger games we come up to. Anyway, the next game was against Peacehaven. As I mentioned, Jack Randall did get on the score of sheet and he got three this game. Um, Malin's also getting two from the penalty spot. 12 penalty taken for a centre-back is not too shabby and he's been making the most of that. Unfortunately, he's finishing in composure on the best, but uh, we kind of lack a decent penalty taker, but he's he showed his class there getting two goals. Um, and all in all, a great result. I didn't even make any subs in this game. That's how fun it was. And then we did, as I mentioned, we beat VCD in our next game. This time, Muggeridge getting the... Um, Man of the Match Award. He's a great player, this guy. Amazing mentals. He's only 21. Bags of potential. A player who, as I've mentioned before, I hope to keep at the club for a very long time. Players' contracts are starting to kind of run down a little bit. So that is something I've got to look at for this coming year. And you can see here, uh, pretty much every player's contract runs out in 2015. So I've really got to start looking at the key players who I want to keep on for the coming season. And he's one of the players who it's going to be absolutely essential I keep hold of. Uh, as you can see, Jack Randall got a goal this game. Neven as well getting another one. Uh, Trelevan getting another and Brinkhurst getting the final goal of the game late on. Good goal for him because he's not had too much first team football. But a good goal there nevertheless. Um, kind of maybe giving him a chance back in the first team isn't the worst idea in the world. Particularly as 
as you can see here, he's actually played a fair bit of football for Lewis in the past. So anyway, that is that. Today we have the game against Met Police. Before that, just a little squad rundown. So based off the last few games, neven has been a great player and Jack Randall as well. Sam Cole as well. I didn't talk too much about him, but he's been getting a hell of a lot of, si of assists out on the left-hand side. Six goals, or sorry, seven goals and six assists to his name from left midfield is very, very impressive indeed. In terms of uh, top performance, I guess, across the duration of the season, uh, Nevin is the top guy with a 7.46 average rating. He's got 14 goals and 7 assists to his name. He's been superb for us, the young 18-year-old player who I'm hoping we can keep hold of. Uh, Trilovan as well with a 7.38 has been great. It's unfortunate his natural fitness isn't too good. It's only 5 and this does mean that between games he gets very tired very quickly and he struggles to actually recover for perhaps 2 games a week if that comes in and you know, you've know you got a midweek game. He's not going to be able to play both which is a real shame because when he has been fit he's been a very good player for us. Uh, Muggeridge, the right back, I talked about Henry already but he's got 7 assists which is absolutely superb for a right back. Stephen Page as well out on the left has done a great job for us. This guy is just so well rounded for in this league he doesn't have an attribute below six he doesn't have any that are five or lower and as you can see has some really nice physical some decent mentals not the craziest technicals but he's putting them to good use and you can see here a 7.29 average rating he is incredibly solid for us uh, Talak as well at centre back has been good. Um, the 22 year old, as you can see here, a 7.37 average rating. Just an absolute rock of the back. And he joined us this year and he's been a very worthwhile signing. Branford's probably been the biggest mixed bag of a player, if I'm honest. He's got 10 assists and he's leading the assist charts in the league, or at least he's right up there in the league. And he's got two goals and his average rating isn't too bad. The big issue for him is his discipline. Two sendings off this year already is pretty disappointing. And it's not as if he's playing as a centre mid in a position where, you know, uh, sorry, he's not playing as a centre back. So it's not as if he's getting in these positions where he's doing professional fouls. It is simply reckless tackles that he's flying into that he doesn't need to do a lot of the time. And it has cost him that ill-discipline. Fortunately, it hasn't hurt us too much in specific games. But nevertheless, something to certainly keep an eye on. So anyway, looking at the overall stats, as I mentioned, George Branford and Muggeridge really, really leading the way. Neven and Sam Cole are also getting on the assist charts, which is really good to see, you know, that we're not really relying on one specific player to be our main producer of opportunities. There's plenty of players across the pitch in various positions really contributing nicely. On the goal front... Uh, obviously Nevin's been superb for us with 14 goals Jack Randall as well, 9 goals he hasn't got many assists which is a slight concern because you'd like to see him maybe setting up a few opportunities as well as scoring 8 but he's done pretty well when he's been fit unfortunately he has had a stub toe lately so he's out for the 2 days although I may risk him today against Met Police but besides that, I'm pretty happy with the overall squad balance. Uh, you may notice, actually, looking at it, there's a few players who just aren't playing for us right now, and they, some of them are on wages. So that is something I've certainly got to look to uh, look at when I'm offering new contracts. I mean, there's players here who were at the club before I started, players like this guy... Um, Matt Crabbe, and he's OK, but he's 32. He's not getting a lot of first-team football, and although he's a good staff member, there's probably better alternatives out there. So I am going to be pretty... I guess brutal when it comes to the wages you'll also notice that a lot of these players here aren't playing too many games, they're fairly old not all of them, but there's a lot in their late 20s early 30s, whereas well, you look at our actual start in 11, it's a very young, fresh side and I'm very much going to be looking to uh, retain as many of these players' services as I can for the coming season so anyway, we have got Met Police today who were one of the teams tipped to do fairly well but as you can see at the moment, they find themselves just outside the relegation zone. Just a quick look at the league, you can see here we actually found ourselves five points clear of Enfield Town in second Greys have really, really dropped off the pace, although they have got a game in hand but our goal difference, thanks to back-to-back-to-back 5-1 to back to back, wins um, is way ahead of the pack now, so that is really good news for us and will mean that should teams start to close the gap, we do have an additional cushion in terms of simply our goal scoring pedigree and as a result our goal difference so anyway as I mentioned Randall is injured today who does my assistant want to play he wants to play for Garmy, which I kind of agree with uh, Trilovan is fit because we've had seven days since our previous game we're going to play Walder and Branford I think in centre mid I'm pretty happy with that our back four is going to be our standard back four with Banks and goal which is really good to see you know again we've not had too many injury roys this year which has been pretty fortunate and um I'm hoping that's going to continue because right now we have a fairly solid set of players all very very capable of uh, contributing 
So anyway, we are away against Met Police. Um, when we met them last time, I'm, I can't remember what the actual score was. Um, I almost want to check that really quick. I can't remember where to check that now, though, so we'll ignore that. I'm pretty sure I beat them. Just off the top of my head, I'm going off there. Either way, we need to be beating them now because I have a feeling we played them fairly early on in the season. But simply because of how poor they've been playing lately, we need to make the most of that. And actually, off the bat, I'm actually going to switch straight from my more attacking variant of our team tactic. This is the tactic I've used in the last few 5-1s against lower teams. Uh, I'm going to go back to that here because it really allows us to take the games to oppositions. As you can see, looking at the stats of the game so far, we are controlling possession. However, half an hour into the game, no chances... Henry McGridge has taken a knock as well. I'm almost tempted to sub him off. I've talked a lot about this in the lower leagues, particularly if you've not gotten a physio. It's always a kind of a risky game you're playing if you keep a player on when they've got a knock. And our keeper's just been caught way out of position there, and that was a really simple finish for them. Pretty disappointing that. I'm actually going to play Talik at right back because he's better at right back than Malins is, and Malins will just drop into the centre. So a pretty simple swap there. But I'm not going to bother risking McGridge here. But that is not the start to this game I wanted by any means at all. Hopefully, hopefully we can kind of step things up here. Because right now it's been a very poor first half. We've not created many opportunities. You can see here we're yet to have a shot on target. So I'm hopeful that we can turn around our fortunes potentially here. Although they're on the attack again and that is a cross. And no one there on the end to connect to it. In fact, it may have even been a shot. And now Alex Malins takes a knock, who's the centre-back we just brought on. I'm afraid I'm going to have to risk him. I don't want to sacrifice our subs for knocks anymore. He's not as key a first-team player as um, Muggeridge is. It is going to be a little bit of a risk to play him there, but... Um, uh, while we're down 1-0, I need to really have two subs at my disposal. I don't want to go into the second half only having one sub remaining and potentially having to really have a roll of the dice and not being able to fully commit to a attack because of it. But anyway, we've got the goal there. Cole is the scorer. Nevin with an absolutely superb assist there. Ball came into the box. He holds up the ball nicely. You can see Cole and... Fagani there, really doubling up on the back post. Number two doesn't know which guy to mark, and we find our way back into the game with our first shot on target. However, regardless of the fact we have scored and we are on course to get a point, I'm not that happy. I feel like there's a lot more to come from us here. As you can see, the players are reacting accordingly. They look fired up. They are up for this game, just questioning their manhood a little bit and questioning whether or not they really want to win this game. We need to want to win this kind of game. Right now, you know, we're five points clear at the top of the league, but I, that cushion is going to be very valuable. All it takes is a few little injuries to key players in this division, and you can easily suddenly, you know, your season can just be going from bad to worse. And um, that's something I'm very, very conscious of. And I want to retain the gap we have on the teams behind us. And the way, best way to retain it is to ensure that when you're going into the games against them, even if you do slip up, you're beating the lower teams down, the teams you expect to beat. And Met Police right now are a team I expect us to beat. And we have got a chance here. That was Fagami hitting the side uh, netting, unfortunately, though. And that's disappointing. 20 minutes left. I'm going to make some changes here. I'm going to bring on Sam Crab, I think, for Fagami. And I'm also going to bring on Brinkhurst as well, I think, uh, for Trelevan, because Trelevan's been pretty poor. So making that double change. Hopefully we don't get any injuries now. That would be pretty tragic with 20 minutes left if I have, I'm forced to go down to 10 men. But let's hope Lady Luck's on our side here. We need to get a goal, so I'm getting some fresh legs in that final third. Particularly in the lower leagues, it's so valuable that you have pace on the bench and players who can come on with fresh legs and really terrorise defences. It's such a, like, a massive advantage when a player's conditions on the other team are dropping to be able to bring on those fresh legs and directly kind of challenge them. And that is exactly what we did there, unfortunately. We couldn't get a chance, and now some crab gets injured, and my my worst fears are actually realised. So, um, I'm actually going to change our system just a little bit because I do want to still go for the win here. So I'm actually going to switch to essentially a four-two-three, and we're going to play very direct here, and we're going to go for it. But time is ticking away. At the end of the day, a draw wouldn't be terrible here. You know, it would have mean we've avoided slipping up points away from home. But just given where they are in the league, I, I expect and want more. There might be a late chance here if Talak can get the ball. And Cole hits the post! 
and it's cleared away and Met Police are going to cling on by the skin of their teeth for a point. We were so unfortunate there. There can't be another chance, surely. Nope, the ball is going to run out of play and that is going to be all she wrote. Unfortunately, we hit the woodwork way into added time there, but it was it was unfortunate. We That's a game that we could have won on another day. Unfortunately, it was a pretty poor game all in all. The injuries that we incurred hopefully aren't going to be too long-term because... I could do with having a few of those players there. Malins is going to be out for four to five weeks. Sam Crabb is out for three to four weeks. And Muggeridge is out for four to five weeks. Well, I had a massive... What's the word? I had a massive uh, kind of emphasis on injuries this episode. I promise you this is 100% live. But I've kind of... I've cursed myself. I've jinxed myself in talking about it so much in in terms of it's now happened... Which is bloody tragic, because we now have three first-team players out for a pretty hefty period of time. And January's not immediately here. We've got a few games in the meantime. In terms of when the next game's going to be, you can see here Berry and Enfield are the two teams behind us, and Billericke and Hornchurch. We've got Billericke before too long, but I don't want to do a commentary too soon. So I'm actually thinking... Potentially um, Hornchurch, but that's only three games. Or it might even be a longer one. I may go to the Enfield Town game away, because that could be an absolutely huge one in terms of knowing where exactly we're at. And it will also mean that a few of our players are injured or have come back, but certainly um, the next few weeks are going to be pretty telling on our squad in terms of how good our squad depth is, because they are some pretty decent first-team players we are out. Particularly um, Malins and Muggeridge are two players who have been ever-present in our kind of defence. And so to lose both of them is not ideal by any means. But anyway, can't, can't dwell on that too much. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I don't want to ramble on for too long at the end of this, but if you did, smash the like button. If you've got any comments, maybe, maybe you know how I can stop players getting injured. <laughs> How do, how do I stop jinxing it? Maybe by not talking about it, Jack. But no, guys, thank you for watching. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more of these, these videos, this is the first one you stumbled across, potentially. There's a link to a playlist down in the description of all the episodes in this series. And other than that, guys, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.